Now let's turn our attention to a very important topic that's called scope. And scope is roughly the domain or the places where an identifier is defined or visible. And in this video, we'll specifically talk about what we'll call local variables or local identifiers. Previously, when we were just working in the interactive environment, an identifier would spring into existence when we assigned a value to it and then that identifier, that variable, was available for us to use however we saw fit. But things are a bit more complicated when we start using functions. The variables or identifiers that are created within a function are local to that function. They aren't visible to any code outside the function. So we can say that variables created within a function are not visible outside that function. And we'll see some examples of this in a minute. Instead, these variables that are created within a function only have scope local to the function. An example helps illustrate this. So let's create a function. Let's call it the function f, and it takes a single parameter or argument. The body has a statement that y is equal to this formal parameter x plus 3. And then this function simply returns the value of y. So we have the formal parameter x, and that appears in that expression in the first line of the body of the code. And we have the variable or identifier y that's assigned a value and then return. So hitting return twice, now that function is defined. And let's go ahead and use it, maybe in a print statement where we say print whatever f with a argument of 10 returns. And we get 13. So 10 plus 3 is 13. No surprise there. But now let's see if the variable x is defined. Let's just say idle, show us the value of x. And it says x is not defined. OK, so what about y? That was assigned a value in the body of the function. Show us what y is equal to. And it says, no, I can't do that because y is not defined either. Clearly, x and y were usable identifiers within the function f itself. But these variables or identifiers and any others we might have defined within a function are not visible outside of that function. They have local scope, local to within that function. OK, so that's simple enough, right? No confusion there. But unfortunately, there are a few twists to this issue of scope. And it's not hard to write code that looks like, at least to a beginning programmer, it's doing something other than what it really does. And let's consider a couple of examples of that. Let's define a function that we'll call get x, and we'll put v0, as in version 0 here. We'll have a version 1 in a bit. And it doesn't take any argument. And it assigns to the identifier x the float value of whatever the user enters when prompted with enter x. OK? That's the entire function. Now, let's call this function. Let's say get x version 0. We call that, and let's enter 10 for x. OK, so what's x now? Well, if you keep in mind that previous function that we wrote, it assigned a value to y, but y wasn't defined outside of the function. So we shouldn't anticipate anything behaving differently here. Let's see, is x defined now? No. So the function was called get x, and we were prompted for a value of x. We, the programmer, might fool ourselves into thinking we've defined an x that exists outside of this function, but we haven't. It's still undefined outside the function. So within the function, x was defined. But once this returned, once it was done doing its stuff, that x disappeared. Now let's write a new version of this get x function. And this one will tack on an underscore v1 for version 1. Again, it takes no argument. The first statement in the body of the code is 
an assignment statement, we assign a value to x. Let's again get the float of the input that the user enters when prompted with enter x. But now we think, oh, well, x wasn't defined outside of this function because we didn't return anything. It was a void function. So let's return x. And hitting return twice, we have this new version of the function. And let's go ahead and, and use it. Let's call get x the version 1 function. And now, how about we enter a value of 20? Well, something was returned. We see the float value 20.0. But it is x defined now outside of the function? And let's check. No, it's still undefined. And again, this is just like the function that we wrote initially, where we were returning y. The value of y was returned, or here the value of x is returned, but that doesn't create a x identifier in this scope outside of the function. This new version of the getx function did return something, and we could use this function to obtain input from the user. But we have to explicitly assign its return value to an identifier. So for example, we might write abc is equal to get underscore x, the version 1 function. Call that, and now we're prompted to enter x. We could put 20 there. And now if we say print what abc is, well, it's been assigned what that function returns which is the float version of the user input. So we have the float value 20. But what is x outside of the function? It's still undefined. This identifier abc is defined outside of the function because we assigned something to it. It sprang into existence at that point. Don't let the function name fool you or the identifiers that are used within a function fool you into thinking something is defined outside the function that isn't. Now, in the next video, we'll see how things can get even more confusing, at least more confusing if we do things in a certain way. So there, we'll talk about global variables.